All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the CRM COE event. It's um, May 5th, 3 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I have Scott Beach uh, joining us to talk about um, the role of CRM in digital transformation. This is the topic that I've been uh, wanting to do for a long time, and we have quite a few interests. People ask for it. And when I talk to a lot of CYE leaders, one of the challenges that they face, how does CRM fit into digital transformation? So this is, a, we only have an hour, so we are not going to go into too detailed. We will keep it as simple as possible. And if you have more questions, you are welcome to reach out to Scott. He's an expert in the digital world. I'm a CRM practitioner. I'm happy to share my thoughts. But first of all, I would like to welcome Scott Beach from SPX Corporation. Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, absolutely. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Scott Beach. Uh, as as I said, I'm the VP of IT Strategy and Digital Transformation at, at SPX Corporation. Actually, now we're, uh, we go by SPX Technologies uh, after a reorg, but uh, essentially we're about a billion and a half dollar uh, global industrial technology firm uh, focused in areas such as uh, heating, cooling, uh, detection and measurement and have businesses that range around the world uh, from cell tower lighting to marine buoys to uh, robots to communication. Uh, intelligence platforms, uh, a wide breadth of about 13 businesses, uh, headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, been with the organization uh, three years. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. I appreciate you joining us. Um, so my name is Ray Lupalani. Some Most of you know that I lead the CRMCOE.com. So the goal is to educate the COE leaders uh, the possibilities of using the, the COE in a structured manner so that we can see the benefit of the platform, specifically on the Salesforce. We talk mostly on Salesforce. You know, I'm a, I've been a Salesforce practitioner for about 22 years. And I also work for a company called HCSC, it's a Healthcare Services Corporation. We are about 50 plus billion dollar company. Um, and we are specifically uh, providing uh, insurance, health insurance for five states, Montana, Illinois, Texas, and Oklahoma, and one more state. I think it's uh, New Mexico. Yes, I, I do remember now all five. So I lead the Salesforce practice for them. Uh, we are a pretty large organization with about 10 instances plus 18,000 users. Um, so a lot of things uh, happen on Salesforce. So it's a pretty um, big environment. So I lead their COE practice. I've been with the company for about three years, quite a bit of learning. It's still a lot more to learn. So the agenda for today um, is uh, that's the maturity characteristics, whether it is a CRM or Salesforce. And what is the relationship? Um, and a lot of companies that I worked with and um, I've been practicing Salesforce or a CRM for about 20 plus years. Um, this, many companies are still siloed when it comes to CRM and digital. So we talk a little bit about that, uh, what is the relationship and how common today in the industry that CRM and digital transformation going hand in hand and compet competencies, what kind of competencies you need to have in order for you to combine these two initiatives to make uh, a, a good use of uh, the, the platform. And then KPIs, we'll talk about it. How do you get started and Q&A? So it's going to be um, a very informal session between two of us. Uh, Scott, uh, thank you again for joining. So Scott, uh, let's uh, let's get started. My big biggest question I have here, I'm a Salesforce practitioner, you are a digital practitioner. And you do have a, a digital, I mean, CRM is under your organization. So uh, my, uh, oh, people are 
unable to join for some reason. I'm just going to go. Um, there are lots of text messages coming. Um, apologies, but I will handle that later. Um, so one of the um, things that we talked uh, about the CRM versus digital, my the first question, where do companies stand in the maturity in the world of digital? I can speak to the CRM side of it. So I would like to hear from you. When you see this, uh, the slide here, where do companies stand today? What's your perspective? Well, I think that it's uh, a great question, Bill. I think many organizations at this point in, in 2023 have defined digital initiatives. And I, I, I do believe it varies uh, by industry, from industry to industry. Um, I think there are industries that have, were early uh, in, in digital disruption. If you think about media and entertainment, if you think about financial services, uh, you, you think about businesses that uh, that had market entrants come in that, that uh, forced them to think in new ways about their customer faster. Um, on the on the lagging side of that, or at least the the least less aggressive side, you, know, you do have companies like industrials and manufacturing and and such where you know the the product is still the the four. Uh, but even there, you know, and companies like ours, I, I think that you've seen a, a, a transition over the last three to five years from oh, digital's a word. I need to have something digital. I'm doing digital things to having a, a, a purposeful plan. I, I would say in manufacturing, for example, the industry I serve, that that most fall in this middle digitally purposeful segment. Mm -hmm. There's documented plans, there's dashboards, there's developing tools, there's adoption, but there's still room to grow. Um, you counter that with, with other industries like, like travel and hospitality, media entertainment, in some cases healthcare, you, you've got option mm -hmm opportunities that, that where people are much further along. I see. Um, so when we, if you look at the on the contrary on the Sierra maturity side, uh, I have because I've been practicing on Salesforce for a long time. Uh, when the maturity doesn't happen um, on its own. It does need to have some structure, some governance body. Um, we call in the Salesforce world, it's a COE, center of excellence. Without that, you're not going anywhere. You will be stuck building lots of technical debt within your Salesforce instance. And so we find organization which has got decent COE, that's a relative term. I don't want to say the COE is also a maturing organization. Nobody starts with a mature COE. So we see COE as a, a, a driver for the maturity. What happens in the digital world? I would say in the in the digital world, um, maturity comes from two sources, uh, and, and it just depends whether you're taking the inside view or the outside view. And, and I would recommend and propose that that you start from the outside, that mm -hmm. the customer is the center of that journey. Uh, you certainly can do digitization. Uh, mm -hmm. automation, workflow, so forth, be more efficient. Um, but that doesn't protect you from being disrupted or doesn't help you put new products to, to market that, that are the next phase of growth for your company. So we take a very customer experience centric and I think meeting practitioners in the field do as well, that the digital starts on the outside. Who are my customers? What problems do they have? What issues are they trying to solve? I may or may not um, play in their space today across all of those pains, but the more pains that I can address, and if I can address them fully, completely, accurately, efficiently, and use digital tools to, to be as seamless with it as we are today in our consumer lives, um, the money will follow, the revenue will follow, the operating margin will, will follow uh, that focus on the customer um, that begins with First of all, knowing who the customer is and, and what their pains and challenges uh, are in their in their daily process. Gotcha. Is COE as prevalent in the digital world compared to this in the CRM world? Just curious to know that. It 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 is. I mean, I think there are many digital centers of excellence or digital transformation offices across companies. 
-hmm. I think it is so broad, you know, and, and my thinking when digital is working well, mm -hmm. you get to the point where it's so pervasive, it's everywhere. You couldn't contain it within a COE because every function, every department uh, has the uh, methods and practices and culture of a digitally nimble organization. So uh, when it's working really well, it ceases to exist as its own box. Uh, but I think where, where most are in transformation today, it does take a group of inspired leaders, of people committed to the cause who have goals and KPIs that they're marching towards to help others through that transformation journey. Thank you, Scott. The word, whenever I see the maturity, I see that also in a human being. What, like, oh, this person is a matured person. Once again, it's a relative term. Um, so a maturity, to me, it's a common sense. You apply common sense, you should understand. It should make it very simple when you look at any transformation. If you can't explain to a fifth grader in terms of uh, transformation, um, are the yeah, basic return on investment process and strategy. It is uh, certainly a challenge. Um, so one of the things that I was reading um, with respect to the, the the maturity of digital, I just completed my digital uh, chief digital officer program with the Northwestern. So I was talking to the professors there. Um, and um, one of the things pre-GPT world, post-GPT world. When I say GPT is the chat GPT that we are talking about, right? Everybody's talking through. This is a completely new. I don't, I don't expect you to answer the question, but I just wanted to get your perspective on it because it's right now everything is perspective. There is no question, yes or no. There is no straight answer. When I was asking the professor, how does chat GPT help an organization mature in terms of whatever they do, whether it's a digital transformation or the CRM transformation or operational efficiency, excellence, and so on. So in your uh, perspective, whatever that you, you're hearing, how does chat GPT help in expediting the maturity in terms of digital transformation? Ooh, that's a good, it's a good question, and I think uh, uh, a complicated one at times. Uh, but to but to to keep it simple, as simple as I can, uh, you know, I think I would say that the struggle that we as humans face in a digital world is is the amount of data that that we're presented with, um, and and I think you referenced earlier the silos of that data. Um, Operations has their data, finance has their data, sales has their data, marketing has their data. We're ingesting far more data than we can look at, make sense of, drive insights. And, and I'm hopeful that as these tools come together, that the chat GPT, right? It's it's conversant, you know, uh, that's that's a that's a big piece of it. But I think the machine learning side of it, the inferences, the analysis. Um, with a human kind of approach to reviewing data, I think has the, poss the potential to change a lot of things. Uh, I sat down with a, a, a CEO of a and founder of, a, of an AI service desk company last month. Mm -hmm. And the level of sophistication mm -hmm. that, that those models and those engines can, can leverage today to get through millions of data sets years of historical tickets, all that sort of thing, and come away with the right answer the first time mm -hmm. um, exceeds what you or I could do trying to process that same data and search the best way we could. Uh, so I think that we're just in the early innings of, of that transformation and how that's going to plug into our daily walk. I completely agree with you. And I am... I'm super excited at the same time, terrified with the chat GPT. So we are talking about maturity <laughs> and when can chat GPT help us to mature faster? I don't personally believe, but it can help to understand the problem faster because sometimes we spend too much time in thinking, talking to people in, in my world, in the CRM world, we talked to quite a bit with Salesforce, partners, vendors, and so on. 
I think AI can help me direct. I, I don't have to start with a clean slate. At least I have some information available on my slate. So this will help me to expedite what I need to expedite. So I think, Melody, do you have any questions? Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that um, uh, looks like there is something. So I just want to make sure I'm answering your question. Well, Melody, can you hear me? I think it might have just been background, Bill. Probably the background. Yeah. So well, I'd, I'd share. Your, I'd say this way. I'd, I share your concerns too. Uh -huh. You know, for all the promise, I worry because I just said digital starts with customer, and to some extent, we run the risk of outsourcing our human interaction with our customers, our learnings from our customers, and because we synthesized it through Chat GPT or some other generative AI, we like, hey, look, I gave great, I gave great customer service to my customer. But the net on the other side is we might not ever learn those stories. We might not ever hear those problems. And, and we just keep creating the same problems. But ChatGPT is giving the right answers and wallpapering over issues that we have, um, process gaps or technical issues or defects that, that we need to address. Um, and we don't hear about them because we've outsourced our customer interaction to to the AI. Um, I completely um, hear you. And this is all unknown territories. So it is still, and I do have Sovin. Sovin um, is the CEO of a company called Order Saver. He joined. Um, I just wanted to ask him whether he has any pers uh, uh, perspective on ChatGPT in helping to expedite our maturity and deliver faster. I don't know whether he's hearing, but I do um, want to get his perspective. We do, and hi, Scott. Um, no, I, I truly believe like if AI, um, we've been kind of using a form of AI in the last 20 years. Um, what was slowing the adoption of AI was the use case. And I think when uh, ChatGPT like focused the, the, the use case on the language, which is at the core of human interaction. I think uh, this is why everybody is talking about it because we can connect to the technology. Um, is it a breakthrough? I personally don't think so. So I think the breakthrough is really about the use case itself where we connect with it and we feel like we feel understood and we feel like the answer match our questions perfectly that the translation um, is better than Google Translate. It feels like we are close to um, being able to mimic the answer of uh, someone similar to us, so we connect to it. Um, but just because of that breakthrough of the, of the use case itself, I think it will have uh, massive consequences uh, on the digital transformation journey, on uh, the governance model for the center of excellence. Then the question will be, um, how this use case of language will be able to be adapted to this digital transformation and um, the, the center of excellences. Obviously, we think immediately about the customer interaction, but um, chatbots were a thing way before ChatGPT, so obviously not to the same level of scale and uh, proximity to the human language. So, but I agree with Scott, it, it raised several questions if we put um, in the digital transformation or the, 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 the COE's model, the customer at the center of everything we do. If that's true, if we start by something that is not human, um, is that the right way? Is a customer relationship um, just about automation and technology or is it also about the relationship uh, with our culture our teams, our people. So I think you know like there is this huge debate about is AI going to remove um, jobs and so on. I'm a true believer that um, AI technology is going to make us better, stronger, uh, but it starts by being optimistic and looking for those use cases where it's not about replacing ourselves. Uh, but about extending ourselves. So I'm very positive about it, very optimistic. I'm using ChatGPT every day. I think it made me a better person as a CEO. And I think it's just at the beginning, I'm trying to adapt my um, workflow 
to try to adapt this technology and, and optimize a few things, but I will never use ChatGPT to make decision on my behalf uh, or any AI. I think AI can make great decision if you bring great data. And uh, I, you know, in the slide that you were presenting, obviously to, to be able to make great decision if you don't work on the quality of your data uh, at the center um, of your technology, then you know garbage in, garbage out. And I think that will not change, but I'm very excited that it feels like we finally went through a breakthrough on the use case itself, that we are going to see even more use cases leveraging AI uh, in the next few months and few years. And it's up to us to select the use cases that will really serve our customers in our teams in the best way. Thank, thank you, Soen, uh, for jumping in. And I, I feel bad that we couldn't get other people on board here. Um, people are waiting in the line, but I didn't want to distract uh, what we are, um, the, the, the conversation, it's getting exciting. So when the next one here, uh, Scott, when you talk about the, the CRM and digital and a lot of people um, especially in the CRM world, I can speak to CRM world uh, just because I completed my CDO doesn't mean that I'm a C uh, digital <laughs> expert or digital transformation specialist. But I learned uh, quite a bit in this. There is a silo um, between CRM and the digital. And the companies are, um, I'm in the healthcare. Healthcare is probably one of the slowest transformation happens in the industry. We We are slow. Um, generally, healthcare considered as uh, bottom of the, the pyramid in terms of the change. Um, so when you look at uh, the, the relationship between the CRM and the digital, I don't think, in my opinion, there is a difference. I mean, because you, 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 one has to exist in order for you to have a relationship with the customer, sell to them, build um, a meaningful um, customer relationship, customer engagement. So when you look at this one, um, this is common in the Salesforce world, out of the CRM world. I shouldn't say Salesforce, the CRM world, enhancing customer experience, business process. It's a platform that we are talking about, data-driven decision-making, supporting innovation. A question here, Scott, do you see anything irrelevant in the digital world? I think this list could could be the same list essentially as a digital transformation list. And I when I think about what digitally mature organizations look like, you know, there's a couple of things I'd wrap around these mm -hmm. around, you know, a strategic approach to technology. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, is maybe a little broader because it's not just CRM. It's given within the C if you're talking about CRM, you're talking about technology anyway. Um, driving a culture of innovation. So you're supporting innovation, um, building that culture where innovation is recognized, where fail fast can happen, where you can incubate ideas, uh, that it's okay to fail. You know, those those types of things uh, I think are, are even maybe more expressed within a, a digital, digital transformation world, but we're both ways are focused on, on being customer centric, on putting the customer at the, at the front um, and I think the last thing that comes to mind for me is, is how do you drive agility? And I think it's there listed in your world as, as scalability and, and flexibility, um, taking a, maybe a, a, just a, a slightly broader word of, of just business agility. Um, that's probably something that I, I think runs counter almost to that idea of digital maturity model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you've ever worked with an organization that was a CMM level five organization, they were never the most agile type of company because everything was so procedural. And I think we have to watch that and caution against that as we build maturity that we don't chip away at our own flexibility and, and do so at the, at the detriment of, of innovation. I, I agree. And when I look at supporting innovation, uh, the, there was a professor at my school there. He actually gave a very good example of what is innovation, a definition of innovation. Innovation is kind of overused in a lot of organization. Um, so, and I would like to share that particularly what this professor said, uh, it needs to be simple and it needs, to, uh, it um, whatever you do, it could be a, a small tweak in whatever you do. 
at the same time, um, especially internally, if you're innovating something part of the company outside, it's hard to copy whatever you do. So that's not innovation. If everybody copies, then that is a copy paste kind of thing. But internally, it has to be easy to copy so the people across the different teams and different companies that they should be able to copy and replicate what you're doing. So it's a, an excellent, uh, um, um, there is quite a bit on innovation. From the CRM perspective, I do see innovation is a, um, the platform companies like Salesforce, they help us to innovate faster. They are innovating the platform and the technology, and they are leading and helping us to do um, uh, innovation. Uh, for example, in the healthcare, we use Health Cloud, which is part of the Salesforce Health Cloud uh, um, platform. So we don't have we as an organization, healthcare organization, we don't have to go and in, innovate or reinvent the wheels that have been done by many other payer organizations. What my question in the digital side of it, when you talk about innovation, where do you draw the line that, okay, this belongs to an innovation that uh, this is our company, our company's property or IP, and here is how we innovate. If you take CRM out, if it puts digital hat, how do you define digital, I mean, innovation in the digital world or digital transformation process or whatever the office you call it. I'm just curious to learn. Sure. It's, um, it's an interesting question. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I, we think of digital similarly to, to, to you in the standpoint of we have businesses that are uh, digital centric businesses on Salesforce mm -hmm. and they, um, they're able to innovate faster because they're not thinking about architecting a platform all the time. Mm. They started with CRM, then they needed uh, a quoting tool. They had a quoting tool. They needed a customer portal. They had a portal. They and then, then when you had a portal and you wanted to have a knowledge base, you had a knowledge base. And then when you want to add uh, warranty and registration data, you can go. You can go there. So it just there was a. It becomes this flywheel that mm. that can move faster because you've got that uh, that in place. Um, and uh, so I think in terms of, of digital innovation, I mean, I think starting from the, from the business process, right? How do, we, how do we deliver our products in new ways? Um, how do we um, extend our capability, get stickier? Um, we're a products company. But if you want to be sticky, you know, providing insights, not just data. Um, I've found that people, customers will not pay you significantly for APIs and data. They see that data as their data anyway. So you're not going to, you're not going to transform your market by providing an API where people can go get their data, hmm. but they will, if you can tell them insights about how their company works in your world, how they buy product, how they service, how they deploy their assets. Um, you know, those are the types of products for us that are, that are sticky, that um, are, difficult to displace uh, and and you have direct correlation back to an ROI for for them uh, and it's easy to monetize. Gotcha. Thank you. No, it's a, thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm always curious to learn because I'm innovation in the CRM world. You know, I don't want to innovate. I just want to follow uh, what CRM, the platform vendors like Salesforce, they do. Um, so now let's move on to the next topic. Um, <clears throat> How how common CRM and digital transformation? These three companies are pretty known companies in the world. Uh, Adidas, Snyder, and Coca-Cola. I took this information from salesforce.com. And these companies are huge. Um, like my question for you, um, Scott, how common CRM plays a major role in digital transformation in terms of medium-sized companies, companies which are a few billion dollars in revenue, um, and even, let's say, half a billion to sure. five billion. I don't know what the medium-sized companies are. I think it varies between industries. Um, so what's your thought in terms of 
um, the the CRM role? Sure, we're we're comprised of 13, 14 companies. Mm -hmm. So even at a billion and a half, you know, our our family, our portfolio um, mm -hmm. have companies that are 50 million, 100 million, 200 million. And I, I think you you really can't start a digital transformation journey without the customer. And you can't start the customer without CRM. Uh, a business that doesn't have a CRM um, is going to be a hard business to uh, have even a foundational conversation mm -hmm. about customer needs, wants, preferences, challenges. Um, it seems to be the first foundational thing that uh, that companies glom onto in a transformation. In the crawl, walk, run, uh, getting your CRM implemented is is in the crawl phase of that of that journey uh, because that data is so rich because the platform is so uh, integral to the communications that you have uh, from that point forward. Um, you know, I've I've heard people say uh, that that you've got companies that'll perform just random acts of digital. Mm. Right. That, 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 that they see a problem, solve a problem. There's a whack-a-mole of, oh, well, customers want to see order status. So, okay. I go build a website and I give them order status. And then two weeks later, uh, customers are having problems with returns. Let's, let's create a uh, return system. And, and you can run around and, and chase those moles uh, with your, with your mallet uh, for, for months or, or years, but eventually you come back to the place that says, who the heck is this customer and how am I managing them? How am I treating them? What do I know about them? And you all roads lead back to CRM as the, as the launching off point for a, for a true digital transformation journey. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's uh, very important for the COE leaders to understand. Um, if, if you are, if you are an organization, small to medium, I think, you are already being digital. So, so what I'm hearing from you, and I want to make sure that our leaders also hear that CRM is digital. It is mm -hmm. a cloud. It is indeed digital. And it is connected to customer. And it is connected to your sales organization. It's connected to your service organization. So when we talk about any time digital transformation and the relationship with uh, CRM, it's, it's, it's not splitting. But the biggest challenge that I have faced, I want to hear your thoughts on it. We all get something called pressure from the top. And we, we want to get things done yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when we, um, uh, let's say, a customer wants to see the order status, immediately we build a portal or we just bring CRM uh, in the Salesforce world, we bring a community license and start giving them access. So we're the the challenge is that we want to do a transformation. Transformation is a journey. It takes serious thoughts in terms of strategy, planning, execution in a phased approach, agility from the company perspective, agility from the the implementation perspective. But it doesn't happen. There's in theory. You know, I've read quite a bit. This is how it's supposed to work. In a large organization, we get a lot of pressure regulation, sometimes in the healthcare industry regulations. So we get quickly, I want to get this done because the, otherwise I get penalized. Mm -hmm. but this is a constant battle that I face and the companies like in the healthcare industry, they face that. And I do not know about other industries much. I've been working with the financial services and healthcare for a long time. How do you, when some pressure comes up and you're doing a major digital transformation, suddenly a, a merger and acquisition comes in, especially in your world, uh, our regulation comes in. How do you stop and go in the digital transformation world? Is it a stop and go? Or how do you do the change management? How do you put the scope? I don't think you can. I think once you start this journey, it's hard to stop. Hmm. Now. Will you vary in speed? Will you hit, uh, to use the analogy of a, of a long road trip, mm -hmm. uh, you go city to city and you're going 75 miles an hour through the countryside, you're making good progress. And then you you come upon, you know, I happen to be in Charlotte. And if I hit Charlotte at five o'clock on a Friday, um, I might get detoured. I might, I might have to uh, um, 
slow down for a while because of traffic or, or other impediments along the way. That's just the nature of business, but the mission doesn't change. The vision doesn't change. Mm. If you're tied to just tactics, it's easy to lose your way. Mm. If you're tied to a longer phase change or state change for the organization, mm -hmm. uh, those are sustaining, right? Because those are cultural. Those are um, overarching. Um, you know, I would say, don't bite off too much at once. Digital transformation can get a little heady um, and academic. And the, the reality is we can solve problems now. Um, I'm not a fan of 18 month, two year projects. Uh, as, a, as a scaled agile practitioner, you know, I, I, love, I love program increments. Here's what, if you can't tell the business what you're gonna do for them every 90 days, even if it's just a new screen, a new feature, a new marketing campaign, something, um, it's hard for them to sustain the, and nourish themselves, right? With with the rewards to, to keep making the journey. Um, so you have to stop, you know, at the if it's at that road trip again, you don't stop at quick trip every so often, you're gonna have some grumpy passengers in the, in the van. So I, you know, it, you gotta celebrate, you gotta stop, you gotta eat, you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta, you gotta deliver those, those nourishing moments back to the business um, so that they have the, the endurance to, to carry on. Um, but you also have to tie those actions, those 90 day or six month releases back to those strategic imperatives of what you're trying to do this for in the first place and keep testing yourself to say, am I, am I doing things that get me closer to where I'm trying to, uh, to end up? Or is this a distraction? Um, you have regulatory uh, items that come up, you know what, sometimes those just are what they are, but it is also very easy. People are quick studies and it's funny how everything can become compliance when I, people know that compliance is what gets approved. So everything becomes a compliance project uh, and, and maybe isn't really compliance. And, and, and that's something you have to caution against is, is just keeping the, keeping your data clean. Data, gotcha. No, it's a very interesting. I, I like the way the analogy is. I think there is a destination on the way you will see bumps and you need to make sure, you need to know your destination and make sure the destination is not too far. Maybe keep a destination. If you want to go long, long drive, but to keep it, I like the Tesla. If you want to, if you are driving Tesla, uh, if you go from Chicago to California, it doesn't give you the direction to California. It gives you the next a supercharger that's mm -hmm. where you go and you charge and then you go to the next charger but it will eventually go to the destination um so very good i uh, thank you for sharing that so the biggest uh, question that um that um, what we always ask is there anything different for digital folks versus the crm folks in terms of the competencies um you see customer centric uh, digital thinking Plat CRM, if you're using a CRM, uh, like a Salesforce, it's a platform expertise. Certainly the business process analysis and optimization is part of your competency, core competency. System integration, data management, change management, these are all very common. Do you see in digital world, is there anything more important compared to the, the CRM side of it in your in your experience? I think the list is is good. Um, I absolutely think there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of overlap uh, between uh, our worlds. I would say the piece that gets, that gets missed sometimes is how to do business differently. Um, there's a lot of optimization in here, right? Mm -hmm. Business process analysis and optimization. Um, if I take journey mapping, as an example, it's a skill that we do a lot of. Um, often, it's very easy for people to think in a UX mindset. Well, here's my user experience. They log into Salesforce. They click these three buttons. They go here. They look at this report, and they're done. Or they're in my they're in my uh, uh, community portal, and they come in and they go out. And I think that that is unfortunately missing the real meat of the problem, right? From the, a customer journey starts at the inception of 
that that moment in your head that says, you know, I think something might be wrong here, or I think I have a need. I have this rumble in my tummy. I think I might be hungry, right? What thought process do they go through? Could be three, four things that they do before they show up at your website, before they go to your portal, before they walk through the door of your store, if you're a brick and mortar, right? So like, until you understand that decision process that led up to the, what you would consider the starting point of your business process. And then you know what happens after they leave. Um, you really haven't looked at the full solution scope of where you could provide value. Gotcha. If you were a, if you were a hospital and you only looked at the moment when you walked in the door, you're not thinking about the paperwork that the uh, person has to fill out before they get to the hospital. Or you're not thinking about why did they decide to go to the hospital in the first place instead of going to an urgent care? Or why did they not go to their family practitioner? Or why didn't they just use WebMD and solve it? Mm. Or maybe they did, you know, and, and you're their third or fourth option that they came upon. So there's just, there's a whole host of um, steps to go through in expanding mm. that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're all prone to this within corporate organizations as well. We tend to optimize our department. Hmm. Well, this is, we're going to create a really great um, sales process. Man, we have done great. It's so automated. It's, it's perfect. But then maybe the order management process is miserable. If I can't tell you where your order is and when you're going to get it, I could have had the best sales process on earth um, and still not have a great customer experience on the other the other side. So I think that holistic thinking mm -hmm. um, and putting the customer first in the silo or the department second um, opens up some ideas uh, to to truly innovate uh, and combine capabilities or expand capabilities in new ways that that help the customer, you know, maybe beyond what you're thinking of just in a in a CRM world. Yeah. Okay. Now that's a Good, good point. Because we only think about sales, service, marketing. We don't really do much about supply chain, logistics, delivery, and all those things. Because we are about optimizing sales processes, so customer engagement process, and how soon I can get the leads and integrated with Salesforce or the sales side of it. No, I, 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 I agree with you. In the digital world, you look at these are the three. It's like a Lego blocks. You have three blocks, sales, service, and marketing. But when it comes to the customer journey, that's not the only three. In the digital world, it's an end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. How do customers buy from you? And what's their experience? And how are they going to be sticking with you? Knowing your customer, understanding the customer. Great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. So, if, Bo, if I could add a, one, one example, there's something that we're, that we're doing now that I think is an example of that. Um, we, one of our businesses makes, uh, is a leading provider of heaters for mm -hmm. residential heating. You know, those things that go in your basement, they last 30 years. Uh, and uh, our customer are the distributors that we sell those heaters to. We don't sell to homeowners. We don't sell to, to contractors. Okay. But we realized in this mature industry that um, if we want to grow, we have to influence and shape that market. And at that moment of pain where your heat is out and you live in Boston and it's January and it's 12 degrees below zero, the person that you're listening to is the contractor who showed up at your house and they're either going to recommend our product or not. Now, the challenge for us is we don't sell to contractors. We sell to distributors and the distributors sell to the contractors. But if we can influence the contractor and make their life easier, we, you know, and we, and we went through a, a customer value mapping exercise and a lot of listening and learning with them and said, okay, what makes life easier and what's the role of the distributor, the customer, and the homeowner in this decision process? The, the contractor um, rose to the top. And so we said, well, we're going to provide you with the tools to make it easy for you to sell, easy for you to install, and easy for you to service our products. And we built a connected experience, a suite of digital tools to do that and we're doing all that investment you know you know the number of zeros after the end of that you know uh, uh, that capital request were went towards a customer we don't serve 
Wow. At least not directly. But you touched everyone. You, pardon? You touched everyone. Uh, but, a we touch touch but we touched the contractor, hmm. which stoked that demand at the homeowner, which, hmm. you know, and also stoked that demand within the distributor because now they have a need for more of our products because they're being requested from these because we're a, the, the solution of choice within the contractor community. That would not have happened in a typical model. You'd look and say, well, okay, how do I make the distributor's life better? How do I make the distributor's life better? That's my customer. I only have a hundred customers. No, there are thousands of, of residential HVAC contractors in America and we can look at their lifetime value and, and, and grow in the market. So that's, that's just a different type of way of thinking and innovating um, that redefines who your customer is and how to get to them. Thank you. And it's uh, one of the, uh, the competencies is uh, what I'm hearing is it's pretty um, um, exciting to hear that the competencies are common, but what is the most common sense is the emotional intelligence, understanding who your customer is. Um, maybe I should uh, update this slide. Um, let me do that later on. <laughs> we are getting uh, almost getting, uh, it's about 3.47, so we have about 13 minutes. So digital KPIs. So I, I when I look at this one, uh, thanks for sharing this information, Scott. I would like you to speak to it. I don't want to pretend that I know this area. Um, so APIs are tough. So, I mean, I'll just say it in digital. It's even these, I mean, you can look at, oh, well, what percentage of my interactions are digital? What percentage of my revenue flows through digital channels? What, uh, you know, there's, there, you get into some stuff that can get really qualitative. Um, or, what percentage of my digital processes or digital or of my processes are digitally enabled? You're never going to get scientific numbers out of some of that. What you can know is, am I pushing revenue through digital channels? Um, we look at things like, like net promoter score. Am I making a positive impact on the relationship between the customer and myself uh, or between the customer and my, and my business? Um, those are, are measurable. Um, and that's why I kind of put, put you know, we, we, we love our friends at, at Gartner and, and they've done a lot of work to try and um, bring to light what, um, what companies look at. Um, but I think, you know, it, at the end of the day, it, it, it starts with belief. Uh, and there is a certain amount of belief that says, okay, I inherently believe that digital is going to make my business better. Now, how much better? How do I quantify that? What am I willing to spend to, to get there? Um, each business, each industry is going to have a different set of metrics that 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 work for them. Um, and maybe down to each department and identifying a couple metrics. In our organization, we set the uh, KPIs for the organization and say you will have digital metrics, but each of our businesses creates a set of, of digital measures that are appropriate for them. Um, they have to include net promoter score and, and improvement in net promoter score in their in their metrics. But beyond that, um, it's going to be different depending on where they are in their journey and, and what they're trying to achieve. Thank you for sharing that. And if you, I see the right side of the, the slide, sales and marketing, that's a, um, dear to me. I'm, I'm pretty close. I deal with it. I can be very quantitative, specific numbers how many opportunities are there? We'll talk about it in the next slide. But see, there is a this is the, this whole uh, discussion that we have today. What is the relationship between CRM and digital? So if you are a COE leader, you need to be not only paying to the your sales force or any platform that you use, you need to understand the digital component of the business. And I say digital component, the digital transformation, what the company is embarking. Yeah. Uh, they have already started the journey. Yeah. It's very important for the COE leaders just look beyond your platform. So that's the message that I want to communicate. Um, let So I can talk to the CRM side of it. Very, very objective. The numbers are pretty straightforward. Okay, how many opportunities come in? How many close? How long does it take? Yeah. To close? 
Um, Melanie, can you put your phone on mute, please? Um, so when it comes to um, um, uh, uh, the, the CRM matrix, it's a very easy, not easy, very straightforward because the platform helps you. In the digital side of it, I, as you said, it's very hard to engage, I mean, measure. Um, so I do feel the CRM versus the digital, there is one complements the other. If you see here, um, so the digital side of it, we have good numbers in terms of the percentage. On the other side, if you look at the numbers here, the contract value, average sales cycle, and so on and so forth. So my, I'm curious, um, um, Scott, when you are as a uh, head of digital, how much influence do you have as a chief digital officer, specifically in your organization or anything that you are aware, you know, you, in the past life, you and I worked together, you worked with so many other organizations on the digital transformation. How much influence the digital officers have specifically designing the CRM solution, mapping to the expectation of a digital transformation? A great question. Uh... I think the on the broken record, you asked a lot of great questions today. So I'll, I'll try not to be a to repeat that every time you ask a question. But I, uh, I, I think, you know, it. In some cases, it's a matter of how much ground can you cover. Uh, mm -hmm. We're a very broad organization. We have probably uh, ten or twelve CRM implementations ourselves going on. Uh, but I, I, we definitely get heavily involved in the design and and uh, visioning of the of our CRM implementations. Uh, to help our businesses learn from others, to help accelerate that adoption. Hey, what are you, why are you doing this? If you don't know why you're doing CRM, you just, I'm going to go implement CRM. You're probably not going to be very effective. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm working with sales organizations, for example, um, I ask more behavioral questions, fellow, about their, their daily operational processes. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've heard my entire career from salespeople who said, yeah, we implemented a CRM it's a pain because I can't get paid unless the record is in CRM. I get yelled at if I, you know, but then you find organizations who every 18, 24 months are rebuilding their CRM platform. Oh, well, nobody uses it. So we're going to re-implement. And then they go, well, nobody's still, nobody's using it. We're going to re-implement. And you say, how do you run your, your weekly sales meeting? Show me. And they pull up a PowerPoint slide with all of their sales activities. And you say, well, why, why don't you go to the dashboard in Salesforce and just filter each sales rep's funnel? Mm. And they go, oh yeah, I mean, good, good point. Well, but, but that doesn't capture all of our revenue because it's not all in here yet, or it's not all in here ever. Go, okay. Well, that's a problem that no CRM tool can fix for you. So we do talk more about the, the spirit of the tool and your, your motivations for putting CRM in place. We then look at, you know, we do have dashboards. We do have configurations that, that are proven to work, but, um, and, and data, you know, it starts with having a good view of data, having the right, capturing the right measures up front and balancing that you're not too heavy. So nobody wants to put anything in and you're not too light that, uh, that you don't get meaningful insights about your customer's activity, um, but but landing in that that happy middle middle ground and then just being relentless about um, being CRM centric in the processes that that work around your CRM tool. Um, it is your system of record for your customer and you need to and you need to live it. Right. And it is this is where I always question myself. This is common sense but how common sense approach we take when it comes to implementing. We make it so complex and hard. And can you imagine the money that you we invest in building all these platforms? And when you hear from a chief customer officer or salesperson, so it's so painful to use. It's like me going to a doctor and say, the doctor, it's so hard for him to listen to my problem. I mean, it's, you know, it's so important that we, uh, when we design at least one of the things as a CEO leader, what I learned over the years, um, 
I have um, not only learned, I have rebuilt four times um, Salesforce platform systems, meaning you implemented and we re-implemented because they just couldn't use it. So a lot of companies spend a lot of money and then sometimes they waste and it is so difficult for a lot of leaders to even comprehend, am I spending the money the right way? Um, I, so the, the KPIs are a really good measurement for the, the, the performance of your platform, right? But if, to, as you rightly said, in order for us to do the right measurement, the data has to be clean. Um, so the last question, the big question, digital transformation um, without CRM, does it happen? Will it happen? Can it happen? I'm inclined to say no. Um, <laughs> I'm existentially, I know that there has to be a use case. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in order to say that it has to have CRM, then there has to be one that that doesn't. Um, there are there may be examples where you uh, where you live in a captive market, where there are no alternatives, and at least in the short term, to use an economist sense, in the short run, you you could exploit those abnormal returns and, and profits. But in the long term, there will be disruption. There will be others that come along and, and, and then you need to know your customer again because you can't, you can't count on them. But I, I, I've yet to see an organization because CRM is foundational to knowing the customer make significant headway in true transformation without, without CRM. I think you can do digitization. You can automate, um, but you can't get at the soul of the business uh, without customer relationship management. Amen, period. Next slide. I don't want to talk anything more than that there. I 100% I agree with you on that. Um, so uh, just to good, quickly get started in the interest of the time, we have three minutes. I, I want to ask whether any questions from So and our Melanie, we missed other folks, but I will reach out to them via um, online. So here is how you get started. Uh, define your transformation objectives. Always assess the current state. It is not one-time assessment. In my opinion, it's a continuous assess, change, tweak, keep doing that in an iterative manner. And um, the business capabilities with CRM solutions. So this is where many companies, um, they do miss. They think, oh, CRM is a tool or a technology no, it is not, because uh, I think in my personal opinion, CRM is a platform that brings a lot of predefined capabilities. So when you're doing an objectives, and if you don't understand the capabilities, you may not even fully understand your objectives. You only know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. I think that's where the CRM platform comes in. So during the uh, defining the, uh, the defined state, uh, you need to make sure that you have the right representation from the CRM team uh, present. And of course, cross-functional teams. And if we always implement, we should implement in a phased manner and iterate and scale. Anything else you want to add here, Scott? No, I mean, I two things I'd say. I say no, and then I talk. Uh, so yes, uh, no, I, I, I would say two things. One, sometimes I, I hear anxiety from those about, oh, well, I'm not a digital person. We're all digital people. We all interact in 2023 with technology. We all have a latent understanding of what a good customer experience feels like. And we know what it feels like when we don't have it, whether that's a, at, uh, with your power company or with Wendy's. You know, it's it's the same. It is a digital experience that that either succeeds or fails. And we carry those feelings into our work. I would say assessing your current state and mapping your business capabilities. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate last year, we, we ran a global digital summit and had a, uh, a guest speaker uh, from Salesforce, Frank Borowski, who's a VP of their manufacturing uh, vertical, come in and talk. And, and he laid out his life uh, as a CIO before, before mm -hmm. Salesforce and, and shared some, some transformational journeys. He said it always begins with a map that is far bigger than you could possibly take on. When you map that end-to-end -end customer journey, it's big. Mm -hmm. You can't eat the elephant all at one time. Find the area of greatest pain, right? What's something that's just laying on the ground when customers hate this 
step in our process. Go fix that, right? But instead of going six steps this way and three steps that way, should move left, move right, move upstream in that process or move downstream in that process, but, but iterate and scale, phase your way through it, like you're saying in the slide, but you know, always keep that big map in mind and just keep working your way through the, through the journey um, because your customer will feel that connected um, empowerment that you're giving to them, that value that you're generating for them when those pieces start to click together. And it's a, it's a force multiplier for, for, for driving that, that customer satisfaction and, and revenue. Thank you, Scott. And um, the, so now I'm actually going to go to the question. Um, um, any questions? Let me see whether anyone has questions. All right. It's not really a good question, Velu and Scott. It's more like a comment. I really appreciated the, the quality of that discussion. And uh, um, based on what I heard, like a, a comment that I had was, um, well, obviously, like I, I fully agree with Scott, where the, the, there will be no uh, digital transformation without the, the CRM. I think the digital transformation is more a statement that the company needs to evolve across the revenue function, the corporate function, the the supply chain, and so on. And if the CRM definition is a bit blurry because the CRM term was invented in two thousand in the 2000s, but since then with the CRM, you can also work with the partners. You can also have some extension with the Apex chain and some financial function. The kind of long story short, the CRM is still about the C of the customer. And um, like whenever it goes away from it, for example, the employee relationship, for example, right now we're using Zoom and Zoom is not yet bought by Salesforce. Uh, so there are still multiple um, part of the digitization that uh, cannot be done with a CRM only. Uh, and I will be thinking probably about the, productive, the product itself with the supply chain. And I will also talk about um, the corporate function. If you want to acquire a company, uh, you might not want to do this in Salesforce. And uh, Salesforce is not exactly an ERP, depending on the size of your company. You could use it as an ERP, but for the large enterprise, usually we don't really see that. Uh, you mentioned two customers of ours, which is really invested in, in Salesforce indeed. Um, and maybe the, the, the last comment that, that I had um, is um, whenever, and, and you know, like I've been working for more than 20 years now in the CRM and working with global Fortune 500 CIOs on digital transformation, I've seen multiple projects um, succeeding and failing, but the common factor of those who were failing and then trying to replace them with a new technology that was better, stronger, more recent, like ChatGPT, um, uh, what I've seen is, is um, um, kind of underestimating the power of the non-technological components on the technological adoption um, on the digital transformation. For example, the, the change management is something that I've seen underestimated in the last 20 years, where I think organization needs to continue to do more progress is not because you buy the best technology on the market on the top right quadrant of Gartner, that this is going to be a success. So I think the two main components um, that I advise my customer to really pay attention to is number one, the change management part, and then number two, the right partner. Um, I've seen a few procurement departments, you know, pressuring their vendors, and the cheapest will partner will not always be the right partner that will make you succeed. Um, so I think those two components of change management and finding the right partner to accompany you, I think are the two key factors of success that today with the right technology will allow you to be successful in your digital transformation. Thank you so and really appreciate it. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you all for joining today. Scott, I really appreciate your time. It's it's sure. always good to catch up. It's been a while that we connected in the past life, but yes, it's a good that we connected. Any closing thoughts, Scott? No, I believe Melanie had a quick question on KPIs, and if if we if we can oh, take that real okay, quick, uh, we'll yeah. give her a chance to. Yep, yeah, Melanie, uh, go ahead, Melanie. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question for you, Scott, in regards to the KPIs. Um, reporting metrics is a key 
um, initiative that I'm focusing on tw for 2023 for our COE and governance across our Salesforce platform. Mm -hmm. And um, your specific KPI that you were showing was in reference to sales. Mm -hmm. And my question is in regards to the data that your KPIs are reflecting, is that automated through a system source feeding into that data or is it manu or is your data manual manually entered? Ooh, it's a mix. It depends on, and this is a this is a Gartner platform of of potential okay. KPIs that, that they leverage. But in 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 practice for us, Melanie, I mean, we've got it varies depending on where people are in their in their maturity. You know, sure. I've seen we've we've had environments where uh, where people do two ups, for example, to to say, okay, well, here was our revenue for the month. Here was the revenue that was forecasted in. Salesforce for each of those reps. Where's the where's the discrepancy? Right? <laughs> Taking the sum of those purchase orders or contract values that that came in and and comparing the two um i've seen organizations uh in, in consulting life that uh that have automated that process that even do matching to say okay if if an order comes in and it is of this size and it's within this time frame i'm i'm truing it up against my my sales lead data um and auto closing auto booking those you know showing that sure. as a win in Salesforce. Um, you know, but I think the other the other key one for for me just as a, as a former sales leader um is activity. Um I believe that good activity builds good results. Uh mm -hmm. so when you look at the the measures around um if you make it easy for for sales reps, we use a lot of Salesforce inbox, for example. Um so they so they can track and manage their interactions straight from Outlook uh into into Salesforce. Um, we're able to see those accounts that haven't been touched, that haven't had activity. Um, and when you look at the the ratio of of how often I'm um, reaching out and touching that customer with some sort of meaningful activity relative to the revenue that they produce, you can get some interesting things and find that you've got sales reps that spend 80% of their time at a customer who's already a, a, a done deal, as it were, right? Right. And doesn't <laughs> spend any time actually going out and, you know, the hunting versus farming problem, right? And and so people will do what they're measured to do and, and setting those goals around, okay, the amount of activity that was with a non-customer, the amount of activity that was with a customer doing less than $100,000 a year in business. Uh, you know, there's, there's intermediate measures you can put in place beyond just the top level revenue number to help incent and drive the, the type of, uh, of actions you want to see from your team. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Good question. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you for everyone joining us. And um, we will stay tuned and we'll stay connected for our next event that's going to happen in June. We will be talking about the state of Salesforce DevOps or CRM DevOps. That's going to be an exciting one. So he's an industry specialist, uh, Vernon. Um, uh, so he will be the presenter and our a panelist. It'll be a good one. Thank you. And looking forward to seeing you in our next event. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Take care. Thank you.